If you are starting out, maybe you're, you've are you got some experience at a shop and you want uh, to have a product, or say you're having a product and it's made and you want to bring it in-house, you want to start up a little machine shop in your garage. What machine or machines would you buy? What would you recommend? If it's going in my garage today, I mean, clearly the simplest way to get started is by buying a TL or a TM. Those are nice because they can run off single phase power. You plug them in Good and they point. run. Yep. That's it, they're done. The disadvantage to a TM, they can make all the same parts. You can make just about anything you can make on any other machine on a tool room mill, but it's not as fast. It's only got a 6,000 RPM spindle standard, and eventually that spindle speed is gonna, is gonna slow you down if you're running a lot of parts. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, ideally, what you wanna do is go, in a perfect world, you run five axis, right? So you can do everything in one operation, or you run uh, a standard VF and you, and you get creative with your tooling. So you're gonna run uh, either a bigger table with lots of fixtures, fixtures. or vices or whatever, or you can get away with a smaller table by running removable fixtures, mm -hmm. right? So um, I'm, I'm happy with even the mini mills and that type of stuff with fixture plates. Right. You put a pallet changer on a mini mill, it was yeah. insane. And, um, but a sub plate that you can pull parts on and off, um, depending on the size of the part. I think, I think everything comes down to, aside from any other questions, every decision on what machine you should buy usually comes down to how many parts am I gonna make and, and, and how fast do I need to make them? And that dictates everything. Yeah. If you're gonna run you know, 20,000 of a part every single month, well then you can afford to buy the you know, whatever, the right. larger machine, you can buy the phase converter for your garage or you can right. you know, rent a shop. Yeah. If your volume is not there, um, then there's no reason to do that. We were talking. We had a, a mini mill at a place uh, that I was working, and that, that, that machine did not get swapped out for years and years and years. It was running one shift and then two, making hitch covers for auto dealerships, you know, bow tie, the Ford ovals, what have you, the Dodge Ram, hitch covers, and that thing ran nonstop for like six, seven, eight years on a mini mill. And uh, I made bigger fixtures for it, for another VF3 and stuff, and we never used it, because the mini mill, it just fit, it, it matched our volume and it stayed there and we right. just left it on there. It was a process machine. It was built for yeah. that process, that product. Yeah, and it, it was perfect. Ran ran. Yeah. yeah, so it's hard, to, it's hard to say that it was, it was money in the bank. We didn't need more than that, it was perfect. Yeah, okay, second question. Money and power is no object. What dream machine in the Haas brand would you buy? Like a big shop saying, hey, we got $5 million to spend. Oh, for sure. Well, see, I, I come from a different background. I've ran a lot of verticals. And it, when I was running a, working at a shop that only had large horizontals, right? So, whatever, 1,000 millimeter, 630 uh, millimeter pallet pool machines. Uh, it was fantastic. And every day I hated those beautiful machines. So, it was, you know, whatever, $2.4 million for this machine and the pallet pool system behind it. You know, just my 24 pallets and the one spindle. It's a lot of money for, 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 for a single machine. And every time I had to make tooling or smaller parts, I'm hanging like eight and 12 inch vices and fixture plates on, on these giant tombstones and climbing right. in and out of machines. It was miserable. It just, the thing was just, yeah. it was beautiful for massive production on large engine blocks and what have you. And it just killed me when I wanted to make a part. Yeah. And so if I had unlimited money and I was just buying Haas machines, I mean, well, I don't, Honestly, and all honestly, even if I had unlimited dollars for any machine, I would certainly have uh, a bunch of Haas verticals. They're just too easy to use. Right, okay. For, for a lot of these quick parts. Right. Beyond that, I think that the horizontals, just a, a, it makes parts too fast yeah. to, to walk away from. So our EC400 with, with, the, def, pallet with the pallet pool, pool mm -hmm. is in there yeah. uh, for sure. So some, for, for running production jobs, I can hit the button on, walk away, Pallets are already set up and running. Uh, that'd be the way to go. But yeah. nowadays, the, the UMC 1000, uh, but bigger's not always better. So the, I, I wanna wait and see what happens with the 750, but the 1000 with this pallet pool that they just put on right. is, is awesome. Yeah, I saw that at IMTS, I'm going, oh, I think I'm in love again. Yeah. It, it's such, it, it just makes sense that you would have big machine, big production tied onto it. Yeah. Like easy, I've thought of, I've, quoted the EC400, the UMC1000 with the power pool, I'm going, but at the end of the day, it's still one spindle. And so I've had this debate online a few times, do I go with three or four verticals that are trusty, that we have our fixture plates or pallets that we can just take on and off, or that 
pallet pool type approach. And what I'm hearing you say is it's not about the price, it's about the right machine, most likely. Yeah. Yeah. I've had I've had unlimited funds, apparently, you know, for, for any machine. And I was given I was given the giant mill turns and the giant horizontals. And it was just brutal because that was the budget and the budget was gone. Yeah. And now I had to live with those, those decisions right. uh, for years and years without a small small vertical and it just crushed me. It just wow. it made my day so much longer. Wow. That's uh, some good insight so though. With all the money in the world, I, I can't I can't not have okay. uh, a bunch of small verticals running those parts because sometimes you need a hundred parts. Sure. You know, done quickly. Yeah. And it, you just and it might never run them again. And, and yeah, it's just it's the true. most effective way to do it. Yeah. And you may have built a fixture for it, you know, to yeah. be efficient and then it just doesn't repeat. Yeah. There's a thread of um, pride, maybe ego in the industry that like bigger, more expensive is more successful. I totally wholeheartedly reject that. We've got five verticals. I'll probably bring in, well, like I said, the UMC 500 and probably another vertical at some point. Yeah. It's just a bread and butter machine. Haas is a great value and it's standardized. And it, could we probably get away with a, a UMC 400 price wise? Yes. But now we're running big production. That's kind of the lean tenant that we move away from overproducing. So, yeah, that's a good that's a good answer. Gosh, I did not expect that. I thought you would say like at the EC 1600, there's going to be a pallet pool in five years coming out, and just tool it up. But it's all about the right machine. Uh, it depends on what kind of parts you're running. Yeah. Yeah, it all depends. On Quantity the of 500. How about lot runs of 500? It depends on if they're recurring or not. Okay. If, 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 if it's coming back, right, yeah. I'd love to put it on, on EC400. Okay. But, uh, but even then, uh, the versatility, you know, the, the, the Haas VF has become the new bridge port. Okay. And it's yeah. just the versatility of it is just such that I can do anything I want with it. And you can always throw a rotary on it, or you mm -hmm. can always throw a fixture on it uh, to get your, your volumes up. Uh, to keep that spindle going more and more yeah. to reduce tool change, you know, tool changes and to get more parts on the table right. and get the cycle time up so I can walk away and do something else. Yeah. Even with a robot, even if it's being tended by a robot, you still want this, you know. Yeah. Anyhow, it's, uh, it depends on what kind of work you're doing. Yeah, it's got to fit. It's got to fit the, the yeah. job. Okay. But even even on high volume production, I've always, uh, whenever I've been in a shop that did not have small verticals, I've always missed. Okay, <laughs> all right. Bread and butter machines, yeah. like the new Bridgeport, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, and we've got, we've, there's new stuff out there. We've got these APLs that auto load parts into our lays, and those are fantastic. But again, do I want that? I don't know. If, yeah. I'm, if I'm running the same parts all day long, it uh, depends on what the shape of the part is, because I'm not going to be loading that part into my spindle. I, I'm going to buy a bar feeder. Right. I'm going to buy the Haas bar feeder or whatever, and put it onto my ST whatever, and I'm going to run parts. Um, but if you've parts are slugs and they're too big to the spindle and you got to hand load them, well then wait a second, then now a robot or uh, this, these APL type systems are, are right. gorgeous because those are the real time consuming parts, the ones that, where the bar stock doesn't fit through the spindle, now what? Right. Now, do I really want an operator sitting there loading by hand? Then I would open my checkbook and buy yeah. uh, one of those fancy systems. But so, it's not my first choice. I don't want to buy that machine. That, yeah, that's true. I, I'd rather buy a, a regular machine. I don't want to spend the money for a bar feeder if I don't have to. But if the volume's there, then oh, heck, I'm gonna get a bar feeder. Right. And if the parts are bigger than my spindle liner and I can't run bar or can't part it off, then I'll, get, then I'll go to an APL or yeah. some robot. And, and I think I got an email recently that APL is coming to Mills too, yeah. eventually. That's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty wild. So they've got it mocked up. They're already running them right at the shop. And uh, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy. So um, you know, automatic fixtures, you know, pneumatics, hydraulic, uh, work holding, this type of stuff. It's, it's taken over. So even, even on the verticals, it's yeah. taken over. Which is going to probably be a little more versatile because um, you can't run, I wish I could, but I, you can't run a bar feeder on a, on, a, on a VF. Right. You could. I've seen them. There's some great YouTube videos I've seen out them there. too. Yeah, the guy with the mini yeah, mill the off the door. Yeah. It's so great. It was awesome. I love that. But it's not, it's, it's not common. You usually can't get away with it. Yeah. Okay, question number three. How does someone get a job at Haas? <laughs> practice, practice, practice. No, uh, there's a lot of different ways, but it usually starts out uh, by...